Hello and welcome back to Friday Minis. Now, wouldn't it be nice if someone took out the trash for you? As it turns out, when you're writing in most programming languages, that's what's happening in the background. The process known as garbage collection is actually, you know, constantly and silently going on. Of course, the question is what is garbage collection, right? What trash is there? And uh, well, is this actually a good thing in every single case? Let's take a look at what garbage collection is and we'll talk a little bit about you know, whether it's always a good thing or not. To understand garbage collection, we must first understand where garbage comes from. Now imagine this. Let's say in a programming language like Java, I create a new variable and I create a new object that is tied to this variable. Under the hood, what is happening is Java goes ahead and creates your new object somewhere in red. So some storage is being allocated. And finally, what comes back to your program is what is known as a reference. In other words, a memory address that allows your program to actually go back into memory to find that object that you've just created. That reference is stored in the variable that you've just created. And yeah, the idea is as you move on in your program, you can do whatever you like with the objects, manipulate it, read its contents, etc, etc. Now, perhaps some point later on in your program, you may want to create a new object. And let's say for some reason, you assign that new object to the same variable. So of course, the same process happens. The new object is placed in memory and your variable now actually points to the new object. So, what has happened to the old object now? As you can imagine, it still resides in memory, right? It's still taking up space, it's still sort of waiting there for operations to happen. But you are no longer able to actually reference that object. You've already lost the handle to it, right? You can't find it anymore. So in fact, since you can't actually touch this item anymore, it can be thrown away, right? Since there's no way for you to continue to access it, you shouldn't keep it around. It has been dereferenced to use the correct term. That is when garbage collection comes in. From time to time, your programming language will actually look through memory to see if there are any dereferenced objects that are just sitting there and wasting space, basically. If such objects are found, your programming language will actually, well, properly delete that object and free up the space so that other programs can actually use that memory. And that's all well and good, right? Because that means you don't have to care about this. That means you can just write your program and your program magically cleans up after itself. You don't have to think about, you know, where the memory will go to, whether you end up hogging too much memory. However, garbage collection is not free. When it happens, obviously your computer will have to devote some CPU cycles to think about that. It will have to perform some manipulations on your RAM to actually free up the memory. And this in fact can be an issue when you're working with a system that is already stretched to its limits. For example, back in the day when I ran a Minecraft server, when garbage collection actually kicked in, the server would slow down. And that is not exactly surprising because again, resources are required to perform this operation. This is why when we delve deep into garbage collection, you realize that there are a lot of things you can tweak with. For example, how often does your garbage collection run? How much resources do you want to actually allocate to your garbage collection? In fact, what are the exact things your garbage collector will do? For example, some garbage collection procedures also actually compact everything together after deleting the things that are, you know, not required anymore. And that is an operation that takes time as well. That doesn't make it redundant because that could actually speed up further operations down the line. But again, the act of doing this will slow down your system. It will actually cause certain operations to take much longer than it's supposed to. So while garbage collection is great, it can also create this uncertainty. Especially with Java garbage collection, sometimes you're just never sure when it actually kicks in. And this actually makes it a bit troubling for you as a coder. Right, because you can write you know, a function that should work correctly, but just maybe one in a thousand runs, it becomes alarmingly slow. You could dig through your code forever and not find the thing that's causing the slowdown, because that is garbage collection. That is something that has nothing to do with your code. So there are pros and cons when it comes to garbage collection. 
it saves you some trouble, but at the same time, it could create a whole lot of other problems in the process. So it's good to know that garbage collection exists. And if you find strange slowdowns in your program, you may want to check to see if it is caused by the guy taking out the trash. That's all there is for this episode of Friday Minis. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, you're watching 0612 TV with nerdfirst.net. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my work and are feeling generous, you can shoot me a one-time donation on PayPal or sign up for a recurring one on Patreon. Of course, you can simply like, comment and subscribe. You know the deal. For more videos, links to my channel and a related playlist are on screen. Thank you for your support.